Hi, this is Atmir with the Bulletin Board Heroes for Wednesday the 8th of March, starting off with the FTSE 100 where it's uh, nestled at that uptrend line there from back in October. That's around the 7900 level. Below that we've got uh, support down towards 7860, uh, the old January resistance 7880, so we'd expect support to come in uh, by that level. If we do break that area then it's down to the 50 day moving average around 7820. We haven't been below the 50-day line since the beginning of November, so a pretty strong market so far, and ideally we remain above that 50-day line. We also ideally want to see this market stay above neutral 50 on the RSI. We've got an uptrend line there from way back in October, so that's also it's also been supporting the sharp turnaround that we've had from the 6700 area, and uh, obviously it looks as though we're going to break that uh, RSI support line and head down to the 50-day line, but at the moment still holding, and uh, it's probably better not to try and jump the gun on a negative front. If you're looking for a new leg to the upside, it would be an end-of-day close above 78.80, really, to uh, open up the prospect of a move up towards the top of that channel there, and as high as 81.80 or even 8200 by the end of next month, uh, or at least four to six weeks after any break of that 79.80 area. On to the DAX, which had a great turn of the week and uh, currently uh, trying to consolidate, I suppose. Uh, 15,600, a barrier there. We've uh, peaked there three times now and uh, we got resistance higher up as well, up towards 16,000. On the downside, uh, really, it's all about 15,100, 200. That's also the area of the 50 day moving average. RSI comfortably above a neutral 50, so we are looking at a market which may be in a more sprightly mode than the FTSE 100, but uh, that 15,100-200 area support and up to 16,000 16, if we can break through 15,600 on an end-of-day close basis. On to the Dow, which has been freaked out by the Fed in the recent past, and uh, that process uh, continues. Uh, we've had a fader at the 50-day moving average yesterday, which was obviously rather disappointing. Also a failure at RSI 50, so uh, you, you know if you're a short-term trader, you would be looking for at least a test of the 200-day moving average there around uh, 32,300, and then maybe even a drop to November support around 31,700. End-of-day close snaps that bearish setup and would get us up to the main resistance line from this time last year as high as 34,200, but that seems to be the range at the moment of that RSI 50 failure, not a good look at the moment. On to uh, Bitcoin, which got uh, freaked out by um, Silvergate last week. Here we've got a situation where the market is uh, attempting to consolidate. Uh, that's just breaking that line of uh, support, that uh, neckline support there from back in January. And below that, uh, i.e. 22,100 or 22,200 to be safe then we've got the risk of a test of support down towards the 200-day moving average at 19,700. We gap down through the 50-day line, so that is not a pleasant look either. We really need to see an end-of-day close back above the 50-day moving average at 23,000 to give us the setup back up to 25, and then the possibility of 30,000 at the top of that uh, June broadening triangle from last year. But at the moment, that seems a long way away. Looks as though we're going to be trying to test for support in the low 20,000s, especially with that uh, RSI breakdown, which is, uh, I suppose, the sort of the look that we're getting on the FTSE. The FTSE is a little bit behind on that, but uh, that's what we're looking at at the moment. On to the small caps and uh, starting off with Borders and Southern, where um, things are looking uh, quite interesting at the moment. Uh, we had a gap down back in November. Gap higher this week, and uh, that's an island reversal. It's actually a bear trap island reversal. Suggests that there could be some decent upside here, perhaps up towards five and a half pence, which is a resistance line projection from back in September. Floor of that channel down there around uh, the 2.6 pence level. So that's what we want to stay above, and that's also the area of the 50 day moving average, which is rising well at the moment. That's another indication that we could rebound and head up to five and a half pence. The rally started back in December with bullish divergence, so we had lower lows, but the RSI pushed higher, so that actually gave a notional entry point there around the two pence level for people who spotted it at the time. Moving on to Capital Metals, which has uh, been uh, continuing its uh, recent recovery. Here we've got a rising 50-day moving average. We recovered that 
early last month and we've had support with a key reversal higher yesterday. So this looks as though we'll retest the uh, top of the gap down there from December around 5 pence and then maybe head up to 6 pence um, over the next 4 to 6 weeks maybe by even by the end of this month if we are lucky. If you're cautious you wait for an end of day close through the 200 day moving average that blocked the market last month and that's been blocking the shares for the best part of a year. I think the last time we were above the 200 day line was back at the beginning of April last year but uh, capital looking good above yesterday's bear trap support around uh, 3.6 pence and initial February resistance at the same number. On to critical metals, where I saw somebody on Twitter has spotted a little breakout there. Breakout of that uh, resistance line there from uh, back in uh, December. The level in question around 27 pence and above 27 pence. We're looking obviously for a retest of the best levels of uh, the turn of the year up to 33, 34 pence. If you're a fan of the shares and uh, dreaming of greater glories, then that would be up to 50 pence by the, well, perhaps as soon as the end of next month which is a September resistance line projection. But uh, the key here is holding through 27 pence, remaining above the 50-day moving average just below that number and pushing ahead over the next few days. Stock which seems to be revitalizing itself as well is uh, Corsell. Here we've had a good few days of the stock uh, for the stock now. So uh, bouncing off or pushing through the 50-day moving average. Last month we had uh, the consolidation uh, above a rising 50-day line, so that's actually worked. Just waiting for an end-of-day close through 32 pence, oh, sorry, 0 0.2, 0 0.32 pence rather. Uh, if we can get that, then the next target for the shares would be the 200-day moving average, which I'm trying to get into the into the picture here, up there at uh, 4.42, and through that, the best-case scenario target up to 0 0.6, maybe by the end of next month, if we get a move on in terms of uh, breaking that resistance line there from uh, back in the autumn. Um, only at this stage, only back below the initial March resistance around uh, point 0.3 area, really slowing down the idea or delaying the idea of a uh, sustained price action move to the upside. I looked at uh, ECO uh, the other day and uh, worth looking at it again. Uh, here we're creeping up higher within this uh, rising trend channel, the top of the channel there around 24 and a half pence. So basically a break of 25 pence and we're looking at the 200 day moving average at 27 and then former support for the shares on the way down up to 30 pence. So maybe 30 pence by the end of this month if everything goes well for ECO. Uh, you can see that we've gapped up high. We've had an unfilled gap to the upside today. So that's looking encouraging as is the rising 50 day moving average. So one would expect a destination near 30 pence. I haven't looked at um, Eurasia for a while. We had a little spike higher and a push higher today, in fact. Uh, spike higher early in the week. Uh, key here, still trying to break that line of resistance from September. That's been the uh, block on upside movement over that particular time, the last six months. If we can get through around the 4.3 pence level, then we may be up towards the 5 and 3 quarter pence level, which is the top of that uh, broadening triangle from November, but it has to be admitted. Most of the rallies here have been sold into pretty soon, as indeed was the one we had, even the one we had on Monday. So the seller seems to be there. Need to break that trend around 4.3, 4.4 pence on Eurasia. Slight hint of a RSI 50 bounce, a bounce off that neutral 50 level, which might allow the shares to head towards 5 or 5.5 five pence. Stock which looks like it's ready to take off is um, GS Technologies. Uh, here we've got um, basically a neckline resistance for the shares around 0.41. End of day close through that, and we could be heading up towards 0.6 over the next or over the following four to six weeks. Initial target there at the 50-day moving average at 0.46, which has blocked the shares basically since the beginning of October. But while we're above the 0.35 zone, looking for recovery there, especially as the RSI is now pushing through the neutral 50 level. Uh, requested stock in the form of uh, Galileo Resources and uh, here it looks as though the one penny level is the low uh, for the stock. We had to uh, move towards that back in February. It's rather weird we've had such a pullback from the 1.6 pence area back in the autumn. But a little bear trap there below from uh, below the February support there around 1.02 and uh, that suggests that we could head up towards the top of the range around one and a quarter pence 
over the next four to six weeks. But uh, the key here really is holding the one pence area. A bit of bullish divergence there as well. Uh, so we've had uh, that bear trap and the uptrend line in the RSI window suggesting this should be the low for the shares after the pullback. On to Just Group, which I don't think I've looked at here at all before, but uh, here a bit of excitement in, in the form of the uh, latest breakout here. We've got uh, an uptrend line there from back in October. We've got the 200-day moving average now rising along with the 50-day line. That suggests that the shares could get up to that November 2021 resistance line projection as high as £1.10 as soon as the end of this month. So a nice little breakout going on there. Stock which um, had some, I think, director buying of late and uh, is holding on to its uh, recent recovery, a mild recovery there from 32 pence. Still waiting for uh, LifeSafe to head up to the 50-day moving average at 42 pence over the next few weeks. The main resistance here up there at 50 pence. We haven't been up at the up at the uh, 200 day line since back in the summer and uh, really want to get back above or hold above 38 pence which was the october support in order to open up 50 or 55 pence for the stock over the next few weeks stock which is in fine fettle on both the technical and the fundamental front is uh, pull bag reason for saying that is that we had an unfilled gap to the upside back in october another one in january and another one uh, basically at the beginning of this month as well. That suggests that we should be able to break that line of resistance from November around 10 and a quarter pence pretty quickly, maybe over the next week or so, and then head up to 13 pence initially sometime during March, maybe up to 15 pence by the end of next month, which is a December 2021 resistance line projection. From memory, I think the shares floated at 10 pence, so uh, it seems to be a little bit... Uh, um, irritating let's say for the for the bulls that uh, after all the progress made the shares are still just near their ipo level a couple of stocks to go now first one is uh, predator which is uh, doing its uh, stuff with uh, challenger at the moment uh, here we've got a situation where we've had the bear trap we uh, also have had uh, it looks like we've got a gap fill um, a gap close by signal in, in the form of the uh, uh, where the shares are now so they close above the 50-day line they'll fill that gap and that would be a buy signal maybe towards the 10 to 12 pence level by the end of next month. Obviously, that's uh, taking a rather optimistic tack, but um, at least we have we did have a strong bear trap rebound and uh, above six pence where the support has come in. It looks as though Predator is on firmer ground. Finishing off with another stock, which has, I think, made its debut here, Time Finance. A great update from the company. Initial target here, a, an August 2021 resistance line at 28 pence the bigger picture target up to 45 pence maybe over the next two to three months and that's a line of resistance from uh, if i can get it way back in uh, 2020 so that's uh, one from the early part of 2020 heading for 45 pence maybe over the next two to three months on time especially while we remain above the 20 pence area which is where the 200 day moving average is that's it for me today more updates tomorrow